All right, so in this video, we're going to go over energy and power. So the uh, question is addressed here. Um, as you can see, the difference between energy and power, how are energy and power related, and also how does power use impact energy use and cost. So first of all, this is a review from our previous lesson. So energy is the physics definition is the ability to do work, but it's from a practical perspective. You can think of energy as, you know, what it causes stuff around us to happen. Everything that we perceive, <clears throat> excuse me, as humans, requires energy to do. Even our perception requires energy. Thinking, moving, all the heat around you, uh, any light you see around you. So anything you see going on around you requires energy. So energy makes that all happen. But it's also important to remember that energy is an amount of something. So it's a discrete amount. You can quantify energy and it's sort of like, you know, here it is, here's a certain amount of energy, right? So you have, and we went over these examples before, um, you know, you have a really little bit of energy in a toothpick versus a whole lot of energy in um, a cord of wood. Or if you have one gallon of gasoline, you have a little bit of energy. If you have 100 gallons, you have a lot more energy. The, the point here is that energy is a discrete amount of something. You have a certain amount of energy in here, a certain amount of energy in here, and it's just, it's there, okay? So it's, it's, it's a discrete amount. Um, also, a review, basic review of some energy units. Uh, the BTU is our basic unit of energy in the U.S. Uh, BTU is defined as the amount of heat required to heat up one pound of water, one degree Fahrenheit. It's a little more complicated than that for, for the purposes of energy management um, in the introductory energy class. Um, water, one pound of water at any temperature, if you want to heat it up one degree Fahrenheit, <clears throat> you need to add one BTU to it. Uh, and if you want to visualize a BTU, approximately, you know, if you take a wooden match and you burn it all the way down, you're going to release about one BTU of heat energy. Okay, so that's our basic uh, English unit of energy uh, and what we use in the United States. And you'll see it all the time in the energy industry, the BTU. Um, we also have our other um, energy units that we use a lot in this course, a kilowatt hour excuse me, is equivalent, again, this is an energy unit, and it's equivalent to 3,412 BTUs. A CCF is 100 cubic feet of natural gas, so if you see CCF, it always refers to natural gas. It's about 103,000, some people say 102,500 BTUs. That's why I have this little tilde here, it's approximate, it depends on the, you know, the purity of the natural gas and so forth. So, um, CCF is natural gas, it's about 103,000 BTUs. A gallon of gas, so this is gasoline, like the stuff you put in your car, it's about 125,000 BTUs. This is heating oil or fuel oil, it's about 139,000 BTUs. Remember, this is the same as diesel fuel. And then a BTU is also, um, uh, you can convert it to joules, and joules are the international unit of energy. Um, and so this is really just a partial list, right? So we have, <clears throat> and again, this is a review, so I'm going through it quickly. These are specifically defined energy units, so they have an exact um, equivalency um, that's a constant uh, um, under certain conditions. Now, these other units are considered energy units, but they're not specifically defined. Remember, for example, the CCF is approximately 100,000, 103,000 BTUs. It's not exact, um, so it's a unit, but the conversion is not exactly the same every time. But for purposes of this class, I'll just provide you with the conversion factor, <clears throat> and you'll use that. Whereas a, one BTU is equivalent to exactly 1,055 joules, right? So that's an exact, that's a scientific um, fact. Um, whereas all of these down here, yes, they're equivalent. You know, you have a gallon of heating oil is equivalent to about 140,000, 139,000 BTUs. This can vary a little bit. It's not a constant. Okay, so that's really important to remember. These are all energy units, and you can convert from any unit to any other energy unit if you know the conversion factor. Okay, so this is a review. Hopefully that rings a bell. All right, now on to power. So power, as opposed to energy, power is the rate at which energy is converted. Okay, or you can think of it as energy per unit time. Uh, Formula-wise, um, it's power equals energy divided by time. Okay, and so power and energy are related, but they are two very different things. Energy, remember, is a discrete amount. It's just an amount of something you have. Here's your energy. Power, on the other hand, is this rate at which you're converting energy from one form to another. Okay, and so um, more power means you're converting more energy um, over the same period of time. 
All right. And just like with energy, we can measure the energy of a battery, of the sun, of a human body, of the Delaware Tech campus, of the earth, whatever. So everything, just like everything, you can measure the energy of or energy in or the energy being used. You can also calculate the power use. So if you hook up this battery to you know, a piece of electronic equipment and you're drawing out that uh, um, electrical energy, what you're doing is you're converting the chemical energy inside of the battery into electrical energy and a little bit of waste heat, of course. But the rate at which you're converting that is your power output of the battery, okay? So if you convert it more quickly, you're gonna go through the, the battery's energy more quickly. Just like if, you know, if you, as a person, if you walk down, or you sitting here listening to this right now and watching this, you're using a certain amount of energy. Your body's using energy. It's, you know, it's burning the chemical energy inside of your body to do all the stuff that your cells need to do, um, you know, generate power, breathe, think, all that sort of thing. So you use a certain, you're going through, you're converting a certain amount of chemical energy into different types of energy inside your body. Now, if you would stand up and start running down the street, you would have to burn more of that chemical energy. And so you're, your body would actually be using more power, which just means it's using energy at a faster rate than if it, you were sitting down. And you can go through any of these examples. The sun has a solar, you know, there's a constant amount of power it's outputting and so forth. Furnaces will use a lot, okay? So the key here is that there is a relationship between energy and power, but they're very different things, but they're also very closely related. And power is the rate at which energy is being converted, and you can think of it as energy per unit time. So let's just go through a couple of examples. So furnaces, um, this is a picture of a, a dinosaur, you know, like a Jurassic era um, oil furnace. Um, and furnaces are rated in BTUs per hour. So this is a power unit, right? So it's the this actually means the number of BTUs it burns through in an hour. So BTU per hour, right, is a power rating because it's energy per unit time, right? BTUs are energy, hours time. So technically, any time you have energy over any energy unit over any unit of time, it is it is a power rating. Now, there are some that we use more commonly than others. BTU per hour is one of, one of those energy ratings. Um, just two quick things to note. First of all, the BTU H or BTU per hour furnace rating only tells you how much it burns through. It doesn't tell you how much it actually provides because of the inefficiencies of the furnace. So just to be clear on that, um, it doesn't mean if I have 100,000 BTU per hour furnace, that doesn't mean it's providing 100,000 BTUs per hour. That means it's it's going through 100,000 BTUs and it's actually going to provide less. The other thing to point out is that out in the energy world, you're not going to see BTU per hour very often at all. Uh, usually you will see BTU H. Um, and sometimes just BTU. So if you ever hear someone say, I have a hundred, you know, a 200,000 BTU furnace, they mean BTUs per hour, which is the power rating, okay? So let's do a quick example. If I use 100,000 BTUs per hour for 10 hours, how many BTUs will I burn through? So remember, this is going to be my energy. So this is really asking how much energy um, that, I, that I burn through. And so it's a simple equation. We have 100,000 BTUs per hour. If we use that for 10 hours, a million BTUs. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so the other really big one that we'll use, uh, power unit that we use, are um, watts. So electronics are rated in watts. Now this one tends to be a little more confusing, but this is a power rating. So this is, um, let's say this is a 100 watt a light bulb or a lamp, um, if the equivalent is going to be about a 25 watt um, CFL. So how is a watt a power rating? And so the reason a watt is a power rating is that a watt is actually equal to a joule per second. So this 100 watt lamp, when you um, screw it in and you turn it on, it's going to go through, it's going to convert 100 joules of electricity every second. So remember, the joule is the international unit of energy. And a second, of course, is a unit of time. So joule per second is power. And this is what a watt is. A watt is defined as converting one joule every second. Okay? Um, so remember, joule per second is energy per unit of time. Another way, if you want to think about it, however, whatever helps you remember it, um, 
you know, you're going to have to keep this straight. It's really, really important that you remember watts are power. And anything that's a watt is power. Kilowatt, megawatt, gigawatt, doesn't matter. Anything that's a watt refers to power. So you need to keep that in mind and remember that. So maybe it helps you to remember that a joule per second is, you know, a, a watt is a joule per second. Maybe just remember that watts power. Another way you could maybe think of it is if I use 100 watts, 100 watt hours over one hour, that's the same thing as 100 watts, right? So this is energy, how much energy I convert per unit time. So there's a, a number of different ways to think about it. The really important thing to remember, power is energy over unit time, uh, excuse me, energy over time. Power is the rate at which energy is being converted. So if I have a higher power appliance or I have a higher power piece of equipment, it's going to convert energy more quickly than a lower power piece of equipment, OK? All right, and so um, some different just to go through this a little bit, so a, let's take a look at these um, energy units on the left, and I want you to think about, um, press pause and think about whether or not these are, or whether these are energy or power, okay? So a joule, remember that's our international unit of energy, and then anything watt, kilo, doesn't matter. Any number of watts is power. A BTU, remember, is our English uh, unit of energy, and then B2 per hour, because that's energy per unit time, is power. So you can actually, again, Anytime you have a power unit, you can convert it into any other power unit, but you got to be careful because you cannot convert energy into power directly. There is no direct conversion between energy and power. You can't do it. Any of these other power units, you can convert. Okay? So just like energy, remember with energy, as long as you have the same type of unit, so as long as it's also energy, you can convert it from one to another. But you cannot convert one unit to another unit if they are different types. So energy and power cannot be directly converted. If I want to convert energy to power, what I really need to know, remember, power is energy over time. So if I, can, if I know the time over which I've used a certain amount of energy, then I can calculate power. Okay? And vice versa, if I use power for a certain amount of time, then I know energy. Um, so just remember, you cannot directly convert a joule to a watt, a BTU to a watt, a CCF to a watt. It doesn't make sense because they're different units. That would just be like trying to convert, um, I don't know, meters per second to meter, right? Or meters to, per second to feet. You can't, you know, meters per second is a, a velocity, it's a rate, whereas feet is a distance. You, those two um, cannot be directly converted to one another. Okay, so just remember to keep that in mind.